My brother has dubbed this to the most relevant example of live action American anime you have with absolutely insane action and melodrama and people performing ridiculous feats due to the power of friendship and you guessed it, family. Since you're here, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe. Let's get into it. Okay, I admit it. I had a fun time with this, and I'd even say it's mostly a return to form. I know I'm a little late to this, so we will be talking about spoilers. F9 was mostly a letdown. I was initially somewhat positive due to the entertainment factor present in these films, but I struggled to remember much about it outside of the stupid stuff. It tried to lean into self-awareness, but it quite nearly became self-parody, with the absolutely silly super strength on display and the fact that they take a car to space. As someone who defended all eight films beforehand and the spinoff, it was just too much for me. So I was very nervous for this one while hoping it would ground things and hit that five through seven and eight magic again. To my surprise, it is a step in the right direction, but not without severe flaws and concerns for how it's starting to wrap the series up. Maybe, anyway, this was supposedly part one of a two-part finale, and now Universal has requested it to be a three-part finale. This will never end. Mixed feelings. Even if this one is a decent course correction, this franchise needs to end and maybe do some spinoffs. Maybe. There's big portions of sequelitis here. Everything is big, grand, and the scope and scale is frenetically massive. Lots of characters, both old and new, come and go and ask us to feel for them in the blink of an eye based on familial connection. That's nothing new, but more of the same. And sometimes those tropes do feel a bit tired. Brie Larson's Tess, daughter of Mr. Nobody, is really likable, but a prime example of that. The action is still ridiculous and physics defying, but in a way that's less eye rolling than previous entries. I thought there were a lot of creative set pieces here with heavy doses of CGI, but more practical than I guess I expected, but there's still a lot more CGI. There's a ton of hand-to-hand -hand fights that all land really well, and the dramatic moments felt well-staged and surprisingly earned, saved one or two. It helps that it's impeccably directed by underrated filmmaker uh, Louis Leterrier, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, who injects his penchant for action with dynamic camera work and synesthetic editing. I don't buy for a second, though, that John Cena's Jacob is dead, and that was glossed over so fast because, like my brother aptly stated, this is basically anime now and Dragon Ball Z comparisons aren't off the board. Whereas Dragon Ball Z brought characters back or used them at that whole bringing back as a plot device, it had the Dragon Ball as a story reason for them to come back. No one stays dead here, and as much as I love Han and having him back, his resurrection in 9 was laughable. And now, Gal Gadot's back as Giselle. Something that was rumored, and I can't help but think it's just because of her star power now. I smiled when I saw her, but also felt like those previous moments had been completely robbed of their tension and meaningful growth they provided the stories. Letty's was first, but set the precedent, and here we are, to where everyone main that has died really has all come back, almost. It's to the point where it's expected and silly, and all the stakes seem removed because no one stays dead, it's irrelevant. So Jacob, I, I don't buy that he said, I just don't buy it. Film is also long. I really felt the pacing at a couple points only to have a rousing finale with a great plot twist. Seriously, I was sitting there thinking that they really copied Hobbs' story arc to give to Ames and how rushed and similar it was. To my surprise, this was a well-disguised ruse to fool me and it was awesome. Sorry Justin Hartley, your failed pilot doesn't count, but I did not see it coming that the two live-action Aquaman from DC are in league together. Get it? Justice League? I'll see myself out. Awesome touch though, love that, created a fanboyism in me. But then, the movie just stops. It doesn't end, it just cuts to credits. Felt abrupt and needlessly like a setup for a final, or middle, chapter of a final film. <sighs> end it, Universal. Give us a send off before one of these bomb and no one cares anymore. I was disappointed in the lack of screen time for Jason Statham and how they sort of rushed his interaction with Han, but even still, that was a highlight. I can't wait to have more of them and hope we get Luke Evans back as Owen Shaw too. Bring in everyone at this point. Cole Hauser coming back as a mob boss from Too Fast, Too Furious is feasible given his popularity in Yellowstone now. I should also mention the only issue I had with the editing was how the prologue played out. It felt long, like a rehash, and like it could have been a revelation for later, but it was in the trailer. So I see why they got it out of the way. And Hobbs' cameo is great, but just had to be spoiled by variety. So stupid internet. Ugh. Can't help but think that Gal Gadot and The Rock may be here because their DC stuff isn't working out. I do hope that Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel 
uh, patch things up though. It doesn't feel the same when Hobbs isn't there. I'd be remiss not to mention the best part of the movie, and that is the wildly unhinged anarchist weirdo that is Jason Momoa's Dante. Dude had charisma for days, felt unpredictable, and was darkly hilarious. Momoa chewed up every single piece of scenery he could and then some. What could have been a standard phoned in and stereotypical performance was made into a near series best by a guy who mostly plays broody but funny heroes. It's like Heath Ledger's Joker meets Jack Sparrow vibes. Crazy. I just wish the script was stronger for the rest of the supporting cast. The humor is very hit or miss, with me cringing a couple times and also laughing out loud at others. The dialogue can be really rough too. Roman is still one of my favorites, but again, all of his tropes, the humor, it's, it's a little bit tired here. And that's a common theme with these movies now. All in all, Fast X is a step up from F9, while being a step into a nervous direction with the worst things it's leaning into. References abound to previous films, and this one struggles with a, its lack of agency sometimes, but I do appreciate what it continues to say about family and friendship, the thematic catharsis that provides, and a good bit of the action along the way. I give Fast X 3.5 out of five stars. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked and subscribed. There's more content coming soon. Remember, always look for the good.